electric. Hi everyone, welcome back for another video. Today I want to talk about home storage batteries and how to size them. Yep, the one you've been waiting for. If you've already got a home storage battery, run through the calculations that I'll show in the video and see whether you've got the right size battery or whether you could accommodate any more. If you're thinking about getting a battery, this should be of help to help you realize what your options are, how to work out whether you're going to get the right sized battery or not, and at least be comfortable with that decision. So let's get the big one out of the way to start with. I can't tell you how big a battery to buy because I don't know what you want. I don't know what your priorities are. I don't know what your energy use is. So I can't tell you. What I can do though is give you the information and a couple of calculations to check what you're doing and give you a good rule of thumb of whether you are planning to get the right size battery or not. That's all I'm trying to do, I'm trying to help. I haven't gone through these calculations with dozens of other people to work out whether they're correct or not, but it looks right to me, it looks reasonable, and with my data, it actually works out quite accurate, which I'll describe later. Okay, home storage battery and sizing it. Two aspects to this, there's the data side of it and calculating what size battery you want and working out logically what sized battery do you want. What do you want the battery for? And this is where we'll start. There's lots of good reasons for getting a battery, but you need to work out what your priority is. Mine, well, mine changed. Mine was I wanted to cover the overnight load. That's mostly what I wanted to do because I wanted to reduce my grid usage. But as you move on to tariffs like the Octopus Agile tariff, where you're very, very concerned about the peak period, then peak period becomes important to you. Some people would want to buy a home storage battery just to cover that peak period because they are very keen to do the right thing. They're very keen to help the grid. They're very keen to use green, clean energy and to promote that by not using that peak energy themselves. So sometimes it's about cost. Sometimes it's about the environment. Sometimes about your just your wishes. So let's go through a few of the items that might be important to you. Payback. It might be that you want to buy a home storage battery and make sure it pays for itself in the fastest possible time. Yeah, I don't think that's the most important thing. And from people that have bought a home storage battery that I know, none of them seem to think of that as the highest priority, but you might do. Long-term payback. So how much money will it save you? Not necessarily in the short term to pay back sooner, but how much money will this battery save you in the longest term, the biggest possible savings? So you might be biased towards not worrying about how much you spend, but making sure you save as much as possible. So we've already talked about avoiding peak usage, but what about the overnight period? And when does that start for you? So for us in the winter, it can probably start from about 3.30 in the afternoon, maybe even three o'clock in the afternoon and go all the way through until at least nine or 10 o'clock in the morning, depending on how dull it is. So for you to work out how much energy you need to get through the night, you've got to do some measuring. If you haven't got solar yet and you haven't got any data monitoring apps, then you can just use your grid meter every day for a good week or a month. Go outside, check your meter if you've got a smart meter. Obviously, you don't need to. You can check your meter from inside. But record the measurements um, from that period of 3.30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, all the way through until the next day, 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock, whenever that is, to make sure you include your cooking times in the evening and uh, breakfast in the morning, etc. If you've got those included, you'll know the number of kilowatt hours per day, on average, that you're consuming. That's a good ballpark measure to start with for how big a battery you want, if just covering that evening load is the most important thing. What if you want more though? What if you want to cover your evening load and a really dull day? So let's say it's the middle of December, you've got a really dark, dull day. You want to not only get through the night, but you want to get through the next day as well. So what is your average electricity consumption during that period? And are you prepared to compromise on how much energy you use to try and last off grid? You know what I mean? Uh, not using uh, grid energy. How long do you want to last throughout the day without any solar at all? It might be a day, it might be half a day, it might be two days that you're after. Well, do your measurement, work out how many kilowatt hours you use on average in that period and overnight and make sure that you have enough to get through if that's your priority. And that's the big if. For me, I did want to be able to go at least a full day and night, maybe into the second day if I compromised. 
but compromising is a big thing. Uh, when I had a five kilowatt hour battery on test, what I noticed was I was conserving energy. I was trying to save it to not use the battery because it was a very limited resource. So that was a good thing. It encouraged me to use less energy. But in winter, when it's encouraging you to use less, sometimes you can take that saving just a little bit too far and compromise your lifestyle, compromise your comfort, end up being like an Ebenezer Scrooge and not having the heating on. You don't really want to go that far. So be conscious of how realistic your estimates are about using energy. Perhaps it's unrealistic to say, I just want to carry on as I am, because that's a bit senseless really isn't it if you're going to carry on as you are and don't really care about your usage then why are you bothering buying a battery or solar at all you should be caring about your energy usage so it's not just what you're paying for it's what you're using and it's what devices you're using as well to save energy it's all of those things together if you care about it and that's what i would suggest is the sensible way of going you really don't want to just carry on as you are and you also don't want to be ebenezer scrooge some of the other things that I've noticed are really useful for having a battery is sometimes you'll want a boost of your hot water. So let's say sometimes first thing in the morning you haven't got enough hot water, but you want to have it hot. So you might want three, four, five kilowatt hours of energy to throw into your hot water first thing in the morning, not consuming from the grid. And that gives you that functionality of the hot water straight away. You can then recharge your battery later during the day as well. In the winter time, that's perhaps not such a big issue because you can use cheap rate energy if you get yourself on a good tariff. Uh, so it doesn't cost you very much to boost your hot water first thing in the morning anyway. So have a think about what your options are at different times of year and what do you want to use that battery for? I also find it's very good to boost the car as well. When we're going to head out first thing in the morning, sometimes it's good not to have charged the car fully. Sometimes it's good to have left the car at 90, 95% and then charge it from the battery until we're leaving. If we're leaving at say five in the morning, it's dark and it's cold, it's sometimes nice to have boosted the car and heated it up as well, pre-charged the car with the battery not charging from the grid and that way one it's left spare capacity in the battery to recharge from solar while i'm out but also it's heated the battery and heated the car ready for your journey so you might want that boost first thing in the morning what if it's an emergency and your car wasn't fully charged do you want to be able to add 10 20 30 40 miles of range to your car as a contingency so there's a few examples of functionality i would say that's the biggest thing you need to think about what do you want to use the battery for? And when you've worked out that functionality, you should be able to measure yourself how many kilowatt hours you're going to need. Obviously allow 10% losses, if not a little bit more, depending on your battery, and then uh, buy the battery the next stage up. So if you work out you need seven or eight kilowatt hours, then buying a nine or 10 kilowatt hour size battery is probably for you. Okay, so if you've worked out functionally what you want to use the battery for, what about a calculation? Well, the easiest one that I could come up with is to look at your overnight peak load, your overnight kilowatt hour usage from 4.30 till 8 a.m. and use the average for the year. Then multiply that by 1.2 and that gives you a reasonable battery size. That would be my first starting point. Try that calculation and see what sort of size battery that gives you. The reason why I look at the overnight side of things is because it's the most important is where you cannot use your solar. The next thing you need to think about is solar and solar excess. So depending on whether you're gonna have solar installed or you've already got it, which is the best bit if you have, because you can see some data, you need to know how much spare solar you have. If you've got four kilowatts of solar panels and you're using all of that energy all the time and you're not exporting any of it, then you don't need a battery, do you? Because you've got no solar energy spare to charge up your battery. What you need is more solar panels. So if you're in the situation where you don't have any solar excess, add more solar is my recommendation. If you still want a battery anyway, then you're gonna be charging from the grid on cheap rate hours and not on solar. So this sort of discussion doesn't really count. So this is probably one of the most relevant calculations to think of. Look at your data for export to the grid between February and March and through October and November. Yep, just February and March and just October and November. Look at the average for those two periods and take the higher of those two amounts. If your grid usage is less than that number, 
then that number is your maximum battery size. Because remember, you're trying to save grid usage. So again, look at your average export for February through March and October through November and take the higher number of the two. If your grid usage is less than that, then that number really is your maximum battery size. One important thing to remember is add in extra electric loads that you intend to use because you've got a battery. Because you've added solar and you've got a battery now, you're going to use things differently. So think ahead, how am I gonna use energy differently? And for me, it was electric heating. I knew adding uh, extra solar and a battery meant that I was going to use electric heating rather than oil. And that was the extra load that I'm gonna be using with the battery. So that wasn't visible in the data I was looking at because it will only happen when I get the battery. Why those months? Why not uh, the middle of summer? Well, summertime you're gonna have more excess anyway, so it distorts the figures. And the peak winter period of say December and January is gonna distort it again because it's the worst scenario. So by picking those months of February and March and October and November, you're talking high percentile of looking at covering your system but you're not looking at extremes because what you don't want to do is obviously cater for 100% of the situations you want because if you do that, then you're not gonna be making very many savings. You've got lots of capacity you're not going to be using. So the idea of the numbers and the way I've designed this is to make sure that it's not too extreme, but it is pretty good. So for me, I did that calculation and it works out to be about eight kilowatt hours. Eight. Now I've installed a battery nearly twice that size, well in fact I did twice that size. Um, so why have I gone for that? And it's because of the functionality of covering multiple dull days. Because I want to cover using electric heating, because I want to boost our electric car. So all those extra functionality things over and above. And I know that my best savings case is five kilowatt hours. And I know that a more reasonable level is eight kilowatt hours. So I know I've gone OTT, I know I've gone for the higher end. But again, isn't that good to know what you're doing and know what to expect from the battery when you get it? One thing I haven't covered is the ability to charge and discharge. So your battery will have an inverter with it and that inverter will have the ability to provide an amount of power. So some batteries, say the first smaller ones that I tested, they only output about 2.4 kilowatts of power. So on top of my solar, it would boost 2.4 kilowatts. During the night without any solar, the maximum I could get was 2.4 kilowatts. So that's not a lot good if I want to heat my hot water during the night because I need at least a three kilowatt load. So sizing your battery inverter for the amount of power you need to get out of it is quite important. Just as it is for charging, if you have a battery as big as mine and uh, my inverter can charge at 3.6 kilowatts, then 3.6 kilowatts times four hours is 14 and a half kilowatt hours. So that's all I could put into the battery from the grid on a four hour cheap rate tariff. So I would either need a bigger tariff, longer, say five or six hours of cheap rate energy to get my battery completely full, or I've got to be happy with the four hour period, leaving 10 to 20% potential for charging from solar during the day. So do your maths as well on the charging ability of the battery you're considering, and how many hours will it take to fill that battery on your cheap rate energy? And do you have, or are you going to have, a tariff with enough hours to charge the battery? For me, if I wanted to have, say, just a three hour tariff, then I would need a battery and inverter that could charge at a higher rate than 3.6 kilowatts. 3.6 is about what you get from a Tesla Powerwall as well, so don't think this is a small amount. This is pretty standard for some of the high-end batteries. If you're gonna go for a really premium system, you're probably talking multiple inverters, so I could then double up the 3.6 to 7.2 kilowatts of charging. Those are the things you need to think about. How much power do you want out of the battery to top up from your solar and how much power do you need overnight? If you want to put a wash on with a washing machine, for us that's 2.5 to 2.7 kilowatts plus the house base load. I need three kilowatts plus to do these things overnight. One of the other reasons that I decided to oversize my battery and make it bigger than what I actually needed was to make it last longer. The bigger the battery, the more the usage that I'm putting into it 
will not affect the performance of the battery. It won't heat up too much. It won't increase the number of cycles too much on the battery. So it should last longer. So oversizing means less usage, means less heat, it means less degradation. The battery should last longer. But of course, don't get carried away. Don't buy too big a battery that you can't charge it from the grid and can't even use the capacity. Don't buy too big a battery that you don't have enough excess solar to recharge from either. And don't buy too big a battery that basically just means you're going to only dent the top of it and never use the full capacity and capability of it. A bit like what I'm doing. <laughs> so I'm suggesting don't do what I've done. Don't oversize too much. But on the other hand, Inflation is going a bit crazy, isn't it? Batteries are not gonna get cheaper. They're only ever gonna get more expensive. So if you've got the opportunity, if you can afford it, why not buy more? Because it will potentially save you more later and it will last longer. And hey, how you, it's probably a worthwhile investment. Who knows? I could probably sell my battery for more than I uh, paid for it now. Not that I ever would. If cost savings and that payback period are the most important thing to you, one thing to not be frightened of with a home storage battery is buying smaller because you can work it harder. So it goes against the grain as in it's going to heat up more because you're using it harder. It's going to degrade more because you're cycling it more. You're going to run it to empty more. So buying a small one will work it harder, but there's more potential to use more than the capacity of the battery. I found with a four and a half kilowatt hour, five kilowatt hour battery, sometimes I could get eight or nine kilowatt hours of energy out of it in a day. And it would do that by using it overnight, recharging during the day, emptying it again during the day, and then emptying it the next evening as well. There's, there's so many opportunities to charge and recharge from the grid and also from solar. That small battery is actually very, very effective. So cost saving wise, go smaller. All the extra functionality and the protecting of the battery and the longevity, go bigger. So some interesting data for you then. Uh, between December and January last year, we averaged generation of six and a half kilowatt hours. We're adding some new solar panels. We added some new solar panels that should give us 20, 25% more solar energy. So our average solar during December and January will hopefully be around eight kilowatt hours. Now, 19 days within the two month period, we did average more than 10 kilowatt hours. So on those days, we've probably got enough to charge the battery a little bit, but on the other days, because of the average, you know, eight kilowatt hours, six kilowatt hours, it's not gonna be enough to do very much at all. And our house consumption during that period is roughly 24 kilowatt hours. I think it worked out to be about 18 kilowatt hours on average for the house and 5.7 kilowatt hours for our hot water. So 23.7 kilowatt hours, that's what we need. So if I've got a battery with a usable capacity of 16 kilowatt hours, and I've got an average of eight kilowatt hours solar, that's 24, and roughly 24 kilowatt hours is what our consumption needs to be during December and January. So it looks like the average day between those two months, I'm gonna be able to cover with both my battery and solar. Coincidence or was that good planning and good calculations? I'll let you decide. Let me know in the comments what you think about this video and my thoughts on those calculations. Let me know if it applies and works for you. Go back in your solar data, see what your export is. See if this calculation comes out to be the right size battery that you have. Or let me know whether you think it's gonna give the right result for the battery year planning. I hope it does, I hope this helps. There's lots there to take on board and lots to think about. But ultimately, it's your battery, it's your decisions, your choice. I just hope this gives you a little bit more information to get it right for you, so you don't feel disappointed after you've bought it. Take care, see you again soon, bye for now.